All right, can we sneak up on this guy? Got him! Let's go, baby! Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the On 22 inch full HD monitor. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. If you're new to the On brand, they also manufacture TVs and they come in these really nice, cool orange boxes. I'm digging the blue as well. This looks great. On the back, see what I did there? We can learn more about this particular monitor. 22 inches is the screen size, measured diagonally. Technically, it's 21.45 inches. 1920 by 1080p full HD, one HDMI input, one VGA input for you legacy users. Visa mount options. So if you want to use your own standard mount, it's 75 by 75 millimeters. They show you what's in the box. And this is a 60 hertz refresh rate. That is right here for you on the front of the packaging. But everything looks great. It's a teeny tiny box. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our warranty information. This monitor does come with a one year warranty. Next, we have our quick start guide walking us through everything we need to know about our monitor very simply i love this quick start guide very easy to understand and find what you're looking for no fluff in it backside additional information like our menu control settings then we have two screws for the included base which is in two pieces right here so line up the pieces it's only going to fit one way Put the two screws in, fasten them in place with a Phillips head screwdriver. Then this is just gonna snap into the back of the monitor and you're all set and ready to go. We have one HDMI cable that's included. Here's our barrel plug DC power connector right here, DC 12 volt. Maybe you can see some of those specs. I'm not sure if the camera there, does it focus? You get the idea. And then lastly, we have the monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. Again, our 75 by 75 millimeter Visa mount right there. One HDMI import, one VGA in, our DC 12 volt power plug, again, to connect our power supply for the monitor. We have our on logo and branding and some additional product info right here, as well as our Kensington security lock. Here's where the stand is going to be installed. On the back, we do have a textured back black panel, which is cool, I like that. I think that's pretty neat. Better than just the boring old black plastic. Here's a look at it from the side. There is a slight curvature to the monitor. So thinner here, a little thicker in the back and then thinner again. But this is a flat screen, it is not curved. Here's a look at it from the top. You can get a feel for that curvature a little bit. Now we're looking at it from the very front. We have some additional instructions here. We got the on logo and branding our tilt viewing angle options from minus four all the way to 18 degrees. Pay attention to the bezels along the side. Very bottom, we have our power button, all of our different menu buttons and control options. There's five buttons on this unit. Small, lightweight, just a simple monitor. Now let's go ahead, let's get it set up and try it out. So the stand is installed now on our monitor. Check that out. This is tilted all the way down, minus four degrees. We can tilt it all the way back, that's 18 degrees, or you can land somewhere in the middle. There's no other options with this stand in regards to either a height adjustment, you know, you wanna swivel, rotate, or do anything else. You'll just have to get creative with books to increase the height, or just physically move it to the left or to the right as you see fit. But don't forget, you can always add your own stand if it's 75 by 75 millimeter compatible. Now let's plug it in and power it on. The monitor's plugged in and connected to our computer and powered on. Let's look at the menu settings first. We have to use the buttons down below. So we press the menu button once, it brings up all of our button options. Then we have our main menu here where we can look at all of our different settings. So first up, we have our brightness settings right here. We can adjust our brightness. Then let's move over to our next setting. That's gonna be our contrast. Same thing, we can adjust the contrast. Let's move over again. So that's our DCR settings. Let's bring that up. We can turn that on or off. We'll go back. Next item is our mode settings, standard movie, FPS, RTS, and eye saver mode. Moving right along our color temp settings, cool, warm, or user. Next we have our aspect ratio. If we need to make any adjustments, we can four by three, 16 by nine, or auto. Input selection right here. 
So VGA or HDMI. We have our adjustment. So we have auto adjust, auto color, and gamma. If we need to adjust any of those settings. Next, we have our other section right here. So our language, power off, and reset tucked away in that menu. Then we have our overdrive settings, off, weak, medium, or strong. And then lastly, we have our exit right there. Now, you may notice too on the screen, we have our Windows display settings, verifying what is advertised. So we're getting 1920, 1080p at 60 hertz for the refresh rate for this monitor. Now we're gonna see how some of the monitor menu settings change the image right here that's displayed for you on the monitor. So let's bring back up our menu. Let's go to our first option here that we wanna check out. That's gonna be DCR mode. So here's DCR, currently it's off. Let's go and toggle it on. So now we have DCR on and we'll toggle it back off, back on, back off, on, off. I can't tell a noticeable difference. So we'll leave it off. Next, we have our mode options right here. Let's bring those up. So we have standard, movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. So currently we're in standard. Now we're in movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. So if blue light bothers you, there you go. Back to standard, back to movie, back to FPS, RTS, and iSaver. We'll do that one more time. Standard, movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. I'm gonna leave it on standard mode is what I would prefer right now. Just the default settings is good enough. Then we have our color temperature and you get the idea there. We'll go ahead, we'll look at it though. So for color temp, we have warm. Here's user, so we can adjust the RGB values. And then let's go over, so here's cool. So there's cool, there's warm, cool, warm, cool, warm. Again, it's up to you which one you prefer or if you want to adjust it manually yourself. Now we have the UFO test pulled up. Check it out. We got three different FPS values on the screen. 15 FPS, 30, and 60 up at the top. This monitor, again, is a 60 hertz monitor. So the refresh rate does come into play when we're using our FPS values. Look at how much smoother the alien looks going across the screen at 60 FPS versus 30 or 15. So just keep that in mind with the budget-friendly monitor like this you're gonna expect 60 hertz for the refresh rate. Unfortunately, there aren't many in this price point. None that I can really think of. Usually they have like 75 hertz, but 60 is the baseline and the minimum. And this is what you can expect if you wanna use this for gaming, any sort of fast paced, first person shooter, things like that. This is a nice sample to show you how smooth the footage will be. But again, keep in mind, if you buy a higher end monitor, they'll have higher refresh rates. So you can match that FPS value and get even smoother footage than what you see here. Just like we make pretty substantial jumps every time we double the FPS values. If we double this again to 120 FPS at 120 Hertz, it would look very substantial, kind of like jumping from 15 to 60. Now we have all the studio lights turned off here and we have a full screen black image on the monitor. Depending on your viewing angle, it may look blacker to you if you're head on and at the right height versus off to the side like I am right here. I found it interesting that it looks very bright and almost white looking at it off to the side, which makes me think this is a VA panel. Now in regards to any sort of backlight bleed, this is really interesting. When I look at it head on, it's not super noticeable, but that makes me think that maybe the whole thing is backlight bleeding. I don't know if that's even possible, but when I look at it off to the side with VA, obviously you're gonna have different viewing angles with the VA panel versus an IPS panel, but I just think it's really interesting how this black screen no longer looks black at all, looks very bright. But with that being said, I haven't noticed any sort of pockets of bleeding looking around the edges perimeter, anything head on. And even off to the sides, I don't either. But again, keep in mind that may vary panel to panel. So your experience could be completely different 
from mine, but I would say overall, so far, so good. So using Display Cal, I've calibrated the monitor and here's the results of the coverage that we get. I couldn't find anything advertised anywhere. And if you know anything about marketing, if there's something good to be said, you're gonna hear about it from the brand. Well, in this case, I see why they didn't advertise anything, but at this price point, you know, this isn't gonna be the, you know, end all be all color correcting monitor for professionals. So just take that with a grain of salt. But our gamut coverage, 93.7% sRGB, 68.8% Adobe RGB, and 70.8% DCI P3. In regards to our gamut volume, 100% sRGB, we also have 68.9% Adobe RGB, and we have 70.8% DCI P3. So I thought it was interesting that our coverage and volume match for Adobe RGB and for DCI P3. But if you're a color corrector or editor out there, you need to do any sort of very color sensitive work. This is not the monitor for you, but chances are you're not watching this video anyways. This is a monitor that's budget friendly, nice to have as a second display, affordable option, maybe to display your stream chat, things like that, not to do legit professional editing where the colors really matter. Now it's time for a practical test. What's it like to actually use this monitor, browse the web, things like that. So we'll look at YouTube first. This is the trending section. Very clear, very crisp. You're able to read everything, see the thumbnails, little previews of the videos. Nothing's fuzzy or anything along those lines. Now with 60 Hertz, I feel like you can tell when we're doing that fast scroll right there. But everything looks good as you would expect for a monitor. Now we have The Verge pulled up if you wanna use this to read a lot of tech news, articles, things like that. A lot of images and videos we can see with some chat threads. Let's click on an article here. Let's just do this one. So image title, some ads loading, quotes. But the text is clear, crisp, no fuzziness again, anything like that. And then lastly, maybe you wanna use this monitor to do some online shopping, right? You never know, but it looks great. Images loading great, right? They're displaying properly, clear, crisp. That's really what I want to stress here. An enjoyable web browsing experience. If you're wondering about built-in speakers, unfortunately with this monitor, we do not get any built-in speakers. That's a pretty big disappointment to me, especially because there's other monitors at this price point or a little bit cheaper that will give you built-in speakers. Now they don't sound great, but I'd always rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Now we're testing out the monitor's input lag. We're showing right around one millisecond or so, give or take a little bit here, not bad at all. That's well within range for most monitors that we test. Usually they come in right around that one millisecond mark. Let's go a little bit further down. Let's see what we're getting here. This value will be greater. Yeah, usually around eight or so. So we're showing 8.2 milliseconds. And now at the bottom, this will be our greatest value of all three. Looks like around 15 milliseconds, 16 milliseconds right there. But we'll catalog this as 1.1 milliseconds for our input lag, not bad at all. Now let's talk about gaming and the best way to talk about it is to actually show you footage in real time. So we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla right here up on display. Again, just our standard mode settings. Look at the quality of the gameplay footage. Decide for yourself what you think. Again, we're showing over 100 FPS, but we're at 1920 1080p at 60 Hertz for our refresh rate. Colors look great. Again, we can tweak some of that ourselves. Just watch the walkthrough right here. Look at the fire and the smoke settings, the cloud, the contrast between everything, the sky and the grass. Feel like I noticed some, you know, sputtering waviness there a little bit. Not anymore though, the water flowing. Movement looks good. Footage is really nice. And then the camera will spin back and pan here. Look at that. 
Great shot. In regard to next-gen consoles, they will work with this monitor. We have a PlayStation 5 here. Now, keep in mind, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox, you're not going to get 4K 120 or anything like that. You're going to be limited to the monitor specs, which, again, are 1920 1080p at 60 hertz. Now, we're looking at Forza 5 gameplay footage. Check this out. I love this game. The graphics are top-notch. It makes any monitor look so good, whether it's budget-friendly or a premium high-end monitor. Look at the reflections, the detail, the movement of the cars as they're racing by. Everything looks great. I'm always impressed with how good, again, Forza 5 looks regardless of the spec of the monitor. Showing right around 60 FPS right here. 1920, 1080p. That Corvette, man, looks so good. Just pay attention to the background, the lighting environment. The sky, right? You're seeing everything here. The movement, the motion of the car. Got some water now on the camera from the game. That's pretty cool. The mist. Look at the detail there with the monitor. The clarity and the movement and motion. That's what you want to be looking for here to see if it's going to fit and meet your needs. Here's our actual gameplay footage. Check it out. We're moving back and forth really quickly around the battle bus. So you can get a feel for the movement, motion, all of that right here. Really fast and rapid. I'm not noticing any screen tearing or anything like that yet, which is always nice. I'll attribute that more to the PlayStation 5 than I will the monitor itself. But yeah, hey, so far so good. Look at that rapid movement of motion. Again, 1920 1080p at 60 hertz. We're currently getting 59 and now 60 FPS. Let's activate that parachute and we'll go back into a quick skydive right here. We'll do a little chopping here on the RV. Give you a nice sample there. All right, can we sneak up on this guy? Got him! Let's go, baby! And we'll have some fun. We'll drive this car. Somebody was shooting at us. Oh, there's a guy! Can we get him? Oh, he just missed. So let me share with you my final thoughts after using this on 22 inch monitor. Hopefully from the video, you're able to decide for yourself, seeing all the facts, if this is the right monitor for you. I think it will come down to how much you're gonna pay for this monitor. For me, I overpaid for this monitor right around $105. On the market today at the time of this video, you can get fantastic monitors very similar to this from Corey and Scepter for $10 less. So in my opinion, this monitor is $20 overpriced. It should come in around $85, maybe $79.99 if Walmart could make that happen. Because again, at $95 from Scepter, you're getting a 22 inch monitor that has built-in speakers and 75 Hertz for its refresh rate. And you'll pick up a couple extra HDMI ports and things like that on the back. And from Corey at $95, you can pick up a 24 inch monitor also at 75 Hertz, does not have speakers, but again, you're still saving $10 getting a larger screen and a faster refresh rate. So for me, what I paid, it's overpriced, but maybe you're finding this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, some sort of one-off sale, then you're probably in good shape if you're under that $95 price point. If not, save your money and go ahead, if you don't care about brand, buy a Scepter, Corey, or another monitor with similar specs that you can probably find for a couple of bucks less.